Hi guys! Today I'll briefly introduce the Julia package, Makey.jl. Makey is a high-level, high-performance, and extendable plotting library, which leverages GPUs to de derive smooth and interactive plots. In this tutorial, I will go over the basic functions of line plots, scatter plots, bar plots, and how to define subplots. Please note that this tutorial assumes basic knowledge of Julia and that it has been installed. If not, Please refer to the videos linked in the description and follow the instructions to get started. So let's dive straight in. To use Makey, we must first install the package and use it in our script. So I'm using the Jupyter Notebook environment, but if you're using REPL, which is Julia's command prompt, you can actually just type a closing square bracket to get into the package manager and then type add Makey. Then, import the newly installed Makey with using Makey. This will take quite a while due to the pre-compilation process. I've actually set up my package in advance, so pause this video if needed, but let's explore more about Makey. In Makey, a scene object is like a blank canvas, holding everything in a plot, and can be initialized by this command. Basic 2D plots are extremely easy and intuitive in Makey. Here, we simply specify the range of the x-axis and then randomly sample 10 data points within the range of 0 and 1. We use the lines function to plot this line. Depending on what Makey backend you're using, you might or might not need um, line 5 at all. I'm using Jupyter Notebook and it's necessary here. And there is your first Makey plot! Although this is a simple 2D plot, you can still drag the graph around. This is also true with 3D plots, where interactivity really becomes interesting. After plotting our first line, we can actually add more to the same scene object, like so. Here, I specify the color of our lines. Also, you might have noticed, I've used two different yet very similar line functions. In this cold cell, lines does not have an exclamation mark following it, and so it isn't an in-place function. However, down there, um, lines directly writes to the scene object and is an in-place function. Now let's make our plot a little bit more readable. First, let's add the title. The title actually doesn't show in Jupyter Notebook, but it should in other environments. So we can also add the X and Y axes labels. Apart from line plots, scatter plots is also widely used. Here, I uniformly sample 20 data points within the range of 0 and 1, and then I plot them out in two colors. This works similar to the line plots. Now let's do something exciting! Make it allows for full control over the scene object coordinates and dimensions, such that we can define ridiculously complex scenes with many, many subplots. To start from the basics, let's first try to plot three vertically stacked line plots. Here, we need to import the pixel area function from the abstract plotting library in order to specify our scene dimensions. We define the scene area to be 900 pixels across and 1,400 pixels down. And because we don't want our graphs to be squished or poorly formatted, we define the padding of each graph from each other and also the borders of the scene to be 20 pixels. The width to be 850 and the height to be 360. Note, 3 times the height plus 60 must be smaller than or equal to 1400. After defining these measurements, we use the fRect function to specify the coordinates of each graph's bottom left hand corner, as well as the height and width of the bounding boxes. Because the origin of the coordinate system is actually the bottom left hand corner of the whole scene. So plots can also consist of different plot types. So let's make one with two line plots, one scatter plot, and one bar plot. So as you can see, we specify four areas instead of three to accommodate four subplots. As reflected by the input values of fRect, two graphs are positioned side by side instead of all being stacked like in the previous plot. In this bar plot, we show that data can actually be layered with the in-place bar plot function. Our bar chart has four columns, as reflected by having a length 4 array. 
The number of indices refers to how wide the bar will be, while the magnitude of each index specifies how tall the bars will be for each column. To get a better sense of what the function does, let's look at the plots. As a recap of what we've learned in this Makey Basics tutorial, we've learned how to do line plots, scatter plots, bar plots, and also subplots. We've also learned how to specify the dimensions of bar plots and subplots, and also to sample data uniformly from random, and to adjust the colors of different plots. I hope that this tutorial has been interesting for you and will motivate you to learn more about Makey. Thank you.